seems like just earlier this month you were a guy trying to win your contender series fight and make it to the ufc now you're about to make your debut can you just describe what the feeling's been like the last few weeks the last few weeks just feel like i'm living in a blessing um grateful to be here thank you for the opportunity thank you to you all you know writing and all the journalists i mean it's a blessing to even have this attention because it's funny as a fighter you get the attention but you don't get here by yourself and it's your tribe, it's your team. So huge thank you to my family and my support system, everybody in my gym and the tribe. That's, I just thank God for that every day. I'm glad to be here and I'm ready to do what I love. This is what I've been praying for, working for, and, you know, looking forward to coming to victory on Saturday. I mean, he announced, you know, right there before you got to lead the Apex, who you were fighting next and when. I mean, when you got back home, did you just go straight to the gym? How was the process like in terms of, you know, just, Take what you just did, and now you're going right back into a short notice fight. Well, so, yeah, right when I got back home, I wanted to practice that Thursday when we got back, because we got back on Tuesday, my coach is like, yeah, you got to take a day off. But there's some kids in the neighborhood who wanted to get on the water slide, so I did that. Uh, took some time to rest, recover, pray, spend time with my family. And then that Friday, I was back in practice. We had sparring, we had training, we had guys who were getting ready for fights. Like, uh, Brian Barberina's getting ready, just like he had his fight coming up, so. I had really no time to rest, but that's what I love. That weekend, trained some more with Diego. Diego Costa, he helped me out so much, working on different game plans for this fight, started breaking, that, breaking down the film. And then right back to work is a normal work week on Monday. Uh, that's how I like it, though. Brian's in town, I'm getting to serve my teammates, get after it. And as you saw Selecki do his job, or do mine and see Brian do, do his as well. Can you break down what Mackie does well as an opponent? Mm -hmm. Mackie does a lot of things well. He mixes it up. I love the way he fights. He comes to fight. I think that's the first thing. Like people focus, I think, on so many things, like how they want to be flashy. But I know one thing that Mackie does super well is that he comes to fight. He's he's committed to it. He's not scared. He's not going to back down. Whether he won or lost, he's coming to fight. I love the way he attacks the body. I love the way he pumps his punches out. You know, he can change rhythm, slow speeds. Uh, he tracks somebody down. He knows how to fight a little bit going backwards. Wrestling, you can see that he wrestles with a strong guy, and great pressure. So looking forward for this opportunity. The last one for me, you touched on it a little bit, but after, you know, already it's been a great month for you. Can you put into words what it would mean to go out there on Saturday and get your first UFC victory? Yes, sir. I mean, it's going to be a blessing, and it's going to be uh, a ticket to take my next one. That's how I look at it. I'm here to work, and just an uh, opportunity to thank God some more. And I feel like when you do what God's called you to do, it's like you're worshiping Him. So that's how I look at it, man. And it's almost like maybe I don't have a lack of words because this is what I've been praying for, dreaming of. This is a restaurant, Viva Chicken, I used to eat at back home in Charlotte with my teammate Diego every day after sparring. I was an amateur and even as a pro early on. We finished sparring and I would say, man, the day that we get to be in the UFC, man, you just watch. Watch what we're going to do. Watch what we're going to do. It's going to be crazy. We're going to do it. We got a contender series that year. Then we didn't get it. We said, no, we're going to keep going back. So we just kept going and eating and eating and eating. Every, every Friday night we would eat, we would just talk about it for hours till they closed and the staff was cleaning up. So to me, it's a culmination of all that. Like, speaking things into existence, but also working for it. Like in Proverbs says, all hard work brings profit, but mere talking is only poverty. So all the hard work's gonna pay off all the time, not giving up during quarantine, not going crazy. And I guess we went a little crazy, but that helped too. And when we claim victory on Saturday, to me, it's gonna be like, okay, let's get going. It's time now. Oh and no, that's how I look at it every fight. Go one and no, and then step into the UFC. Ready to fight September 12th, ready to fight in Abu Dhabi, ready to close out the year four or five more times. And that's why I'm here. I have a lot more work to do. I haven't made it yet. I don't think I've made it at all. You know, it's like to get in the UFC is great, but just to get in here, what does that mean? To me, I have to put a stamp on it. That's, that's the goal. So it's just the first part of it. Hey, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. God bless. And we'll take our next set of questions from Gavin Porter with UFC.com. That's me. So, hey. yeah. So, um, I was just going to ask you, you go through two contender series fights. Do you feel like you have any sort of thing to prove to, to Dana or anyone that, you know, when you're hearing your name getting this contract, you're like, we want to see what he has in fact two weeks from now. Do you feel like you have anything to prove on Saturday that you maybe didn't get a show in your first two fights in the contender series? No, sir. It's not ever better about something to prove. I think that's too much of my ego. I got it. For me to say I have something to prove, it means I'm looking for their validation. I know that me showing up ready to fight, after the pandemic, five fights canceled, I didn't know what I can do. I know what we're going to be able to do, and I don't have to make adjustments. So proving to myself that maybe I have to get better. Uh, I really look at my coaches, you know, like what do they think about how I fight? How, 
like what adjustments did I make? Did I listen to them? Did I get going? Like last fight, my first round wasn't the best. It's not that it wasn't a good first round, but it wasn't representative of what they taught me. So for me, it's, it's not about dating them. I, I appreciate them and I'm glad to be here and I'm ready to work with them. And I'm grateful, but it's more important to me about the people that know me best. And when the people that know you best, you know, approve of what you did and they can be honest with you because they're going to tell me what I did wrong. They're going to tell me what I did right. And at the end of the day, they're going to just say, hey, keep showing up, ready to work. And I like it like that. So no seeking approval or validation. I'm here to fight and do what I do. And it's been working, so we're going to keep it this, keep it that way. And I want to ask you about those canceled fights and then the, yeah. the contrast of getting a fight basically before you walked out of Apex and like the last contender series. How excited were you to have something right away and be able to jump into this new adventure? Man, I'm super excited, super blessed, grateful. Like, I remember he said, you have a fight, and it kind of didn't register. And I was like, oh, man, I have a fight. That's great. That's great. That's ready to go. And my agent was calling me to say, are you going to take this fight? But when the number got given out, I was like, uh... I can't answer these phone calls. I don't be rude on TV. But then at the same time, too, it's like he said, I called you, but I didn't see it. And when I found out that on a fight, I just found that as a blessing. Like, my fight was originally scheduled for September 1st, the last contender series fight. And not to have a fight for over a year, pretty much. And then to fight on the 11th, claim the victory, get the contract, plus get a fight. To me, it's like my dad tells me, like, you get double for your trouble. You get a blessing. Like, you stay to it. So, all those fights that are canceled, I mean, none of it compares to the UFC contract if you're talking financially. But also, too, like, I get to do what I love and how many people get to do that, especially like, some people just started a business that closed down during the pandemic. So, uh, some people lose family members and all my family members are healthy and alive. So to get what I do in front of that, to get to do what I love to do in front of them, I can't put it into words. So to have that fight that night was just, it's a testimony to what happens when you just trust God and keep working. So I look at it. And my last question is, how do you envision, you know, you and Mafi, how your two styles are going to collide once we finally see you guys in there on Saturday? It'd be a lot of fun. Uh, Maki's a good guy, good fighter. He messaged me. He's like, hey, he's ready to have some fun, and so am I. Really looking forward to claiming this victory. I know he's going to bring it. And any fighter like I, like that I respect. Like some of my favorite fighters are Hawaiian, especially Max Holloway, just the way he comes to fight. And I know Maki has that spirit in him. And I know in my culture and what I've been taught, it's like you come to fight too. So uh, the way I look at it is like get in there, gas him out, get going, do what we do best, be disciplined, stay in structure, and then dominate the fight, claim victory. Leave a respect, hopefully become training partners one day. Right now, get to work, get after it. And um, it's going to take a lot from it. We're going to see some exciting, exciting techniques, discipline, and intelligence.